Aloha and welcome back to Live at the Legislature for our weekly Senate segment. We're on on Wednesday this week because yesterday the Senate was busy passing over 450 bills. <laughs> and we're in the home district of my guest this week, Senator Carl Rhodes. Thank you so much for Morning. being here. Thanks for having me. Your district stretches from Chinatown all the way to the Poly. That's right. And includes the capital that we're sitting in today. Yep. Dowsett Highlands, Pu'unui, Nuuanu, Pacific Heights, Paua, Punchbowl, Palama, Liliha, Ivile, Chinatown, and Downtown. It took a long time to walk it. <laughs> All right, got some good exercise. Yes. So you're the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, and uh, one of the issues you've been taking up this session is gun control legislation, and in particular, we're all focused on that because of the terrible incident that happened at Dino Diamond Head earlier this year. Tell us about some of the bills you're working on. Well, one of the ones I think that will be would have would have been useful before the uh, that would have addressed the situation in Hibiscus uh, Drive is that is one that requires you to um, when you buy your ammunition demonstrate that you have a gun that's registered to you. So this person that did the shooting, we're not really sure where his guns came from, but under this bill, he wouldn't have been able to buy ammunition legally, and that makes it harder. I mean, no no law is a hundred percent effective. But it, it certainly would have addressed. Uh, it, it certainly would have been useful in this situation where he had to go buy ammunition for those guns that he didn't. He wasn't legally registered. So as it is right now, you need a license to get a gun, but you don't need any license to get ammunition. Right. We don't. We do not essentially. There's basically no um, uh, restrictions on selling ammo. Anybody can go buy ammunition, whether they have a gun or not. I don't know why you would buy one if you didn't have a gun, but you can certainly buy one if you have your gun illegally, mm -hmm. and you can buy one, of course, if you have a legal gun, too. And some of the reporting suggested that the guns had been left in the home by the uh, late husband of one of the victims, um, and you have another bill about uh, estate guns? Yes, there's another one moving through um, that I think is only in the House at this point, but it's, it's coming over, and that is that if before you before you can sell your estate completely, you have to uh, dispose of whatever guns you, that are in the estate. So disposing means you, you, there's different ways you can get rid of a gun legally. You can give it to the police. You can sell it to somebody who has a permit. Uh, you know, there's uh, there's other ways to, to get rid of it legally. But you have to you have to account for it before the probate closes. So it's um. Uh, Part of, the, part of the problem for us in Hawaii is we just don't really have any. We, we, we know there are a lot of guns in Hawaii. We're pretty sure there are more guns than people, mm -hmm. but we don't have, we don't really keep track of them very much. So if you take your gun out of state, uh, we don't know. Uh, in fact, we have another bill that says you have to tell us if you take the, what you do with your gun if you leave the state. And uh, just having some idea um, who has what is useful because we don't want them to get into the hands of people who uh, aren't eligible for owning them, you know, felons, people who have committed domestic violence abuses or who have mental illnesses. We're lucky to live in a state with a relatively low rate of gun violence, but it does seem like there's been an increase in it in the last year or so. Yeah, for the, for the last year, um, well, I, I just read a couple days ago that we had fallen to third in gun violence, but uh, the, the year before that we were number one. And yeah, it does seem like there's been a little bit of an uptick. It's hard to tell whether that's a trend or whether it's just you know, these are very unusual circumstances, so it's hard to tell whether it's uh, a, a, a something that's going to keep going in that direction or whether it's just an anomaly. Uh, so one thing that's always protected us in Hawaii from gun violence, in addition to having good gun control and good gun protection laws, is that our attitudes towards using them have been pretty um, mellow. You know, we we get in a beef, you don't you don't shoot the guy. You, maybe you punch him in the nose, but you don't mm -hmm. shoot him. And that has made a big difference. The attitude does matter. I'd say it's probably a third of the equation. Mm -hmm. The other third being that a lot of states that have really good gun protection laws, they border a state that doesn't. Right. And so you get all these guns coming in. Some of the numbers are, are really remarkable. The, um, I think in New York, something like 70% of all um, gun violence is committed by guns that were brought in from out of state. Mm -hmm. So we don't have that problem nearly as much, of course, because we're 2,500 miles away from right. anything. Right. Yeah, I used to live in Washington D.C. and guns are banned there, but Virginia is right next door, which has very liberal gun laws. Right. You just drive across the bridge, and there's nothing, nothing you can do. Yeah, nothing really the city yeah. can do about it. So we're very lucky to have the ocean to protect us from that. And another uh, bill that passed your uh, passed the full Senate yesterday relates to the size of magazines that you can have with guns. Yes. Yeah, so for years and years, we've had restrictions on machine pistol magazine sizes, um, but for whatever reason, when that bill was passed decades ago. We didn't include long guns, which are shotguns and rifles. So um, both the Senate and the House 
have passed bills that limit the magazine size to 10. And um, you know, some of these magazines that are legal now, you know, I, uh, my understanding is you can have up to up to as many as a hundred shots, and uh, you know, I just we don't. There's really no reason for those unless you're just mm -hmm. trying to kill a bunch of people all at once. You don't use them for hunting. They're not really useful for self-defense in a home. So mm -hmm. um, that's that's a move we're looking to make too. Well, thanks for your efforts to keep us safe on those. Matters. Absolutely. Um, the Senate passed a bunch of climate change bills yesterday, um, including uh, your carbon tax bill. Uh, tell me how this carbon tax works. Well, it's uh, it's the, the economics of, of it are fairly simple. Um, if you there are certain things that we produce or make that the the total um, all the negative effects that are that go along with it don't necessarily show up in the price. So it's what the economists call a negative externality, and there, there, it's common in all kinds of different fields, but. For carbon, the negative externality is that it goes up into the atmosphere, blocks the, or doesn't block the sun, it lets the sunlight through, but then it keeps the mm -hmm. heat inside the envelope of the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a very big negative externality after you let it pile up for a, a couple of hundred years, and that's what we've done. So what this bill would do is essentially put a price on the, on the, put a price on the damage that carbon is doing to us, and then we would ratchet that up as we go along and that would eventually, we just won't use carbon anymore because it will be too expensive to use. Uh, all the economists, even the ones who disagree about global warming, said yes, this will work mm -hmm. because it, it's a market solution, it's a market signal back to people who use uh, carbon, and, and which is all of us, um, that you know you need to quit using so much of it. And um, so it's, it's, a, it's kind of a big deal. We, there's only been three, I and mean, other, other countries, uh, British Columbia, for example, has had a carbon tax for a while. Mm -hmm. But um, the only legislative uh, bodies that have ever passed a carbon tax in the United States are Hawaii, us, the Senate twice, we did it one last year too, and Massachusetts did one last year as well. So uh, it's a very effective tool to fight carbon uh, em emissions, and it would be historic if Hawaii actually managed to pass the bill this year. And it would help incentivize alternative renewable forms of energy because they won't be subject to the tax. Absolutely, that's exactly right. That's exactly how it works. And as the as time goes on, we would continue to raise the rate until eventually it just wouldn't be necessary anymore because no one would be using carbon. Mm -hmm. And as we know, this problem is increasing every year. And here in this island state, we're surrounded by ocean, and we got to do our part. We're we're going to be hit the hardest of just about anybody. And yes, we're we're not big enough to you know if only we do it, it's not going to make any difference. But we have been leaders on the whole carbon issue for years already, and many people, many other states have followed the, the example we set. So uh, we have every reason to do it, uh, both uh, both because we will be affected by it, but also because we know we can play a leadership role. Well, thank you so much, Senator Rhodes. We'll keep following those bills as they move through the session. And uh, thanks so much for being here with us this week. Thank you. We'll be back at our normal time on Tuesday next week. Thanks so much for watching. doing? We have to go. I'm gonna be late for work. It's Tuesday morning. I gotta record live at the legislature on Alelo. Senate and House leadership discussing what's happening at the state capitol. So just watch it on the news tonight. Come on, let's go. Hey, this is like getting the news before it's news. If only I could get this remote to work. There. Can we go now? No DVR? No problem. Watch Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Channel 49.